number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buffs covering all things theater. And I'm coming to you from the LTV studio in Wainscott, where I have a special guest today. We're going to do a segment on the Longhouse Reserve, which is, is a 16-acre sculpture garden uh, in, on Hans Creek Road in the northwest of East Hampton. And uh, they just had their gala which is, was really exciting. And they have a lot of stuff to talk to us about. Jack Leonard Larson founded Longhouse in 1991. And it's, a, it's open to the public uh, Wednesday through Sunday. And we're going to learn all about it and what they're doing and how it came to be. And we have Nina Gilman, the co-president of the trustees. Uh, and we have Wendy. Uh, ben Dusen is it? Yes, that's uh, correct. Curator. Yes. Uh, and she just recently curated an exhibition of Jack's work, Larger Than Life, which we're going to show you JPEGs of at the end of the show. It's really exciting to see. Thank you so much for coming. Thank it's you for having us. to have you. Thank uh, you. It's really exciting to be able to do a segment on Longhouse. Uh, I love it. It is absolutely yeah. just a, a magical place to be. And you just had your gala. It was fabulous. Thank it you. was absolutely fabulous. It, it was unbelievable. You had mermaids swimming in in the <laughs> pool. You had a uh, reggae band dancing. Royal Chaos. Do, do you know the people that performed? At, at the we had Royal Chaos, who was the reggae band. Uh -huh. and they, they, they came back by popular demand. And we had the Jazz House Kids. And we also had a group who also have come back, Soundwall. So we're kind of uh, true to our musicians. It was dynamite. It was dynamite. And, and you had over 500 people. Yes. And you raised a lot of funds for Longhouse? Yes, we did. We did well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, Nina, tell us yeah. some of the things uh, about Longhouse, how Jack's vision for Longhouse came to be. Okay. Well, um, Jack had originally owned a piece of property just next door to Longhouse. And it was called Roundhouse. And it still exists. And it's very, in large part, as he as he left it, certainly the house. Um, and I'm going to let Wendy take this up. But he had the idea. He purchased the property adjoining it. And he, had, he did that in 1975. And he had the idea of turning that property, which was larger, into uh, more of a public space. And Wendy has an interesting tale about that. Well, I think that um, from stories through Jack, that when he was out here in the 70s, he and Alfonso Osorio, who had a large mm. piece of property, right, exactly. and Ward Bennett, the three of them discussed turning their properties into public spaces. They wanted to share it. But unfortunately, and fortunately, Jack was the, the only one to be able to do that. So we're also lucky. Why do you to think that, that was? Do you think Jack had more determination, or I think he did. His I vision think, was I, stronger. I think he did, and I think that he, um, when he purchased uh, the acreage that we have at Longhouse, he he had that vision then. So he and he, he set he it up. Did he? He originally bought them simultaneously. Is that correct? No, no. He, he was. He had Roundhouse first. But but and then the house. The, the property was always available next door, and they bought it later. He did buy it later, and, and for a while, there? I think he owned both of them, but then he sold Roundhouse to this wonderful couple, the Bergsmas, who still live there and are good friends of ours and on occasion open their house for, in a, in, you know, in connection with some of our events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it was separate because he was, he put in, and you'll actually see a clip, I believe, of the Red Garden. He put in the amphitheater. You know, he was working on the property while he had Roundhouse, but they were kept separate. Well, G well, Jack died December 2020, yeah. and what I think is incredible about his vision is how he put, brought together a family, is what he did, of people that he trusted, 
mm-hmm. relied upon, who he could bounce things off from, how he could create this incredible garden, sculpture garden it is, because there's, there's Dale Jahuli is there. What yeah. else? Are other sculptors are in the garden too. Well, we have a big de Kooning, a wonderful de Kooning. We have a geodesic dome by Bucky Fuller, and, um, and we have rotating artists. We have you know friends who are Jacks to Shiko Takezu, who actually is going to be having a, a show um, coming up soon in the, in the city, and um, who else? Well, we currently have. Ai Weiwei, a wonderful set of zodiac figures. The zodiac, the bronzes. Let, 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 let's, this is a good place. Let's show the film. Sure. We, we have a little film uh, of Jack. It's edited down from, from the original. That it sh- you, can, you can see the full thing if you want to go to the exhibition. The exhibition is at Longhouse. It's Jack Larger Than Life, which Wendy curated. We're going to show you some JPEGs at the end of the show. That's but but uh, the, this film, you could see the whole thing at... Um, at the exhibition. We're only going to show you three minutes. It's a little bit of Jack and how this, so you can see what Longhouse is and how it came to be. Could, could we have that now? This all started when I first had this land and uh, I was living at Roundhouse next door and there was a pair of trees down there perfectly matched. We have only one left. But I wondered what I could do to heighten that perspective. And I thought, well, I could do red posts. And then I had odd assorted uh, red azaleas on both properties that didn't look well. But all when they were masked, they, uh, they were all right. And so that's how it happened. In a time when most of us are subject to so much conformity, mass transportation and communication, Gardening's a chance for uh, being more individual. I've always gardened. I think if I'd been rich, I wouldn't have been nearly so creative because I I wouldn't have had to think about what you can do without money. It may not be the ammunition, but it's, it's a trigger for a lot of things. Longhouse Reserve is a portrait of Jack Leonard Larson. It integrates all of his interests, not least the educational programming. He's really educating the next generations of artists, designers, weavers, collectors, writers. People talk about Jack as a master craftsman, a master of textiles, a master collector, a master landscaper. I like to just say, Jack is the master. Thank you so much. And, and Wendy just told me that you can also see the film on the website, but I strongly suggest going over to the yeah. gardens. Uh, they're open Wednesday through Sunday uh, and learn all about Longhouse. Uh, it's a wonderful place to go. <laughs> so so let, let's talk a little bit more because Jack is a textile designer. There, there was a wonderful quote, and I, I don't know the whole quote where Jack could have been a painter, or an artist. Mm. Do you want to help me with it? Uh, that might have been... I think we had it on on his. Um, oh, it might have been the, from the Louvre exhibit. Jack yes, is, yes, that's yes. yes it and was, I can't, I can't recall I, it all. Okay, so but, right, it, it, it basically said Jack could have been a painter, a painter, an artist, a painter, an architect, or, or a, 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 a textile designer. He chose to be a textile designer because he could be all thing, all of those things, in in his work as a textile designer, and she kind of says that at the very end of the film, how he's the yeah. master of, of all, all the things yeah, that he, I mean, he chose he really to was. 
yeah. his little yeah. finger into, right? right? Right, right, right. And one of his watchwords was, and you can hear it in the film, the importance of not of nonconformity, you know, of striking out on your own. And I think that lets you. He would always remind us that when it came to gardening, he was an amateur, right. um, and he had to rely on the experts to help him with, you know, the plant care, etc. But he was not afraid, you know, to come into something and and do what he thought was right without regard for, you know, the rules or... Right. You have to learn to break the rules a little bit, too, sometimes, don't yeah. you? But that, that you were talking about, about how the, the trust thing uh, there, yeah. how he, in the nonconformity, how, how he's, how in his instructions to you, we were talking about that earlier, yeah. he's, he also passed that on to the board of trustees. Yes, he was uh, very fond of telling us, and I think it's a quote from Balanchine, that um, he wanted us to be relevant, not reverent. And when you read his writings, he emphasizes how much he loves change. And he was, you know, of course, he had his textile business for many years. And then that net year's line was always the, the next best thing. And every new, he would travel the world to see new museums. He was loved architecture. And everything was always, he was always excited about the next thing. So that's a great permission. Right. We, we very much want to preserve his legacy, of course. Um, but we also have the freedom in his instructions to, you know, to change and grow and be relevant. And, but he's, he's made the, the, the blueprint and the foundation, a wonderful uh, foundation. To, you know, kind of drew the lines and then said, go out of them if you want to. It's like, yeah, but know. for now, we're yeah. staying in them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you're, you're, it's, what, what I, what, what I, what I, what I thought was so interesting about Jack, besides all his creative stuff, how he had the, the vision and the, to bring together all of you people as a family and trust all of you people to interwork so that when, when it came time for him to yeah. leave it to everybody else, that he has the whole family there to take care of it and how he has co-presidents and how he just, the, 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 the idea of trust runs all through mm -hmm. everything he did. And he always, he always liked a team and embraced a team effort in everything he did, he would bring in the best people he thought that could do that job. He always wanted to be surrounded by people who had great ideas to to help him like bring Wendy forward said, his. You know, like, I'm, I'm sorry I called you Wendy. That's okay. <laughs> I'm, that's, I'm proud that's okay. to be called Wendy. <laughs> no, no, but uh, but you you said that before that he. Um, yeah, you know he. Um, he, 1991, so now we're going on the 30th year, he created the Board of Trustees and the entity then. So, you know, very soon after the house was built and um, he had the grounds to a certain state, he was already creating a structure that would endure. And he also had the, um, the wisdom to create these committees that, um, you know, and of course, membership on the board, on the committees has changed over time, but it was his way of bringing in many talented people to, um, and most of us are volunteers, and he was able to inspire us That's to true. I start, I started dream. as a volunteer as well. I have done every little job going through Longhouse, but it is wonderful because he had that vision. And we do have, we have an arts committee, we have a garden committee, we have an education committee. So he really, he, he was planning all the, all the way along. All, all through the whole process. Uh -huh. And, and I, cause I really think we talked about that, how, why out of the three did he succeed in what they all thought they might like to do? And I think yeah. there's probably a, a, a constant. Well, we had been talking about when, when Jack was a little boy, you were going to Oh, um, yes. Do you want to tell this No, you should okay. tell it. <laughs> I've always loved it. Um, he loved to say that when he was a schoolboy, he lived in the, grew up in the Pacific Northwest, he um, would dream during the days in classes about the projects he would take up during the weekend. And he would go out into some natural setting <laughs> with a group of friends. Of course, he would be the leader. <laughs> and, and he would want to build a fort. And how happy he was when, um, you know, he got, that was some of the happiest recollections of his working with that group of, of people to make things. And I was just reading some of our material. He, he loved to call himself a maker.
Yeah. yeah. He's a really sweet man. Now, now your the exhibition that's on 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 display right now. It's going to stay up until September 14th. Is that what you told? Yes, we just extended it another. Unfortunately, just another week. People wanted it to it's go much really longer. We're going to show you stuff. When, Wendy's the right. curator right. of this yes. wonderful ex exhibition, and we have some some images from it that you're going to talk sure, us about. Would you mind doing that? No. So we're going to show you these wonderful images from Jack, larger than life, and he certainly was. Uh, here they are. Thank you. Oh, this is um, our introduction. That panel is from um, his exhibition at the Louvre, and that large piece, the cylinder, is Dale Chihuly. Um, and uh, the first piece he ever collected of Wharton Asherick, it's sitting on that beautiful piece there. And that's his jacket that was the last photo, the image in that film that you showed. So that's how we have that. And this is, um, we call this the tapa section. That's a piece of tapa cloth that's behind actually um, a console that he designed for Larson Furniture, because it was not just textiles, he expanded quite a bit. And those beautiful African-footed um, stools he would keep in his kitchen, and they were always filled with the, the bounty of Long Island with tomatoes and uh, apples, and you know, it was always gorgeous, oh, a watermelon, you know. It was, it was stunning, and that kimono was wonderful. And, um, the polka pot by Margaret Ponce Israel is beautiful too. Ah, this is my <laughs> what Sherry and I call our wall of velvet. This is gorgeous. I mean, Jack. Oh my God. Jack was he really? It looks was like the, it came out of Elizabeth Taylor's closet. I know. He, was, he, <laughs> he really invented the the technique to to dye with that kind of saturation on that cloth. So it was a combination of getting the right weave and then being able to get that dye to saturate all the way through it. And people think of Jack like not so colorful. I think they think of him in a, in a mm -hmm. more of a neutral, natural. But he wasn't. He he loved color. I and love it. And these were, you know, I would say I would cartwheel through that section if I could. <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous. Thank you. Oh, this is another beautiful. These are um, kindred spirits, or those tall, the two tall pieces. That was his one of his adopted sisters. I did try to um, bring in his friends. Wait, wait, stop. Wait. Yes. Kindred spirit, the, these two. The, the two, two tall pieces. And, and yeah. they're adopted sisters? No, the person who, Dawn McNutt, who, who made these, was oh, okay. one of his adopted sisters. Uh, okay. <laughs> and, um, and a beautiful Linda Bills piece is sitting right in front of that too, called Armor. And the piece to the left of the kindred spirits is a beautiful, uh, given by a good friend of Jack's, Edward Albee. Um, that armor made from um, its bone. Which is the armor? It's right next to the kindred spirits to the left there. Yeah. Okay, that the, the kind of it like tor tortoise cell color? Yeah, it's huh? a little tall there. And there's a beautiful, um, oh, well, here we go into. Edward Albee was always a constant presence at yeah. Warhouse and when here, he was alive. Here you can also see that we, we tried to put in um, pieces that Jack wore as well because his his fashion sense was unbelievable. But, and so that's a fireman's coat, the one to the right. And that was in, the, also he was wearing that when he was talking about the Red Garden. And that's the, the, the large square there, it's called boro. It's a Japanese technique of, a quilting technique. And um, a few more pieces, Chungi Chu is the, all those silver pieces on that beautiful table. And uh, a few more pieces of, uh, Toshiko Takezu, those three little blue ones. And that blue all the way to the left was called Chan Chan. And that was a, a gorgeous, saturated um, cotton that's tied and dyed. And that's one of Jack's fabrics? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, this is, um, this is interesting. The, <laughs> on the, um, you know, Wendy, it's amazing how you were able to get so much stuff into to, to what is Relatively, uh, not that large a space. Right, and it still and, doesn't feel and it doesn't full. It, it, no, it doesn't feel full. It doesn't, yeah. I mean, and they all, all the image, everything relates to one another in yeah. each one of the sections yeah. so beautifully. What we wanted to do, Sherry Dongia curated it with me. Mm -hmm. and, you know, because I'm sorry. We, 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 the, yeah, well, another time. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, and so when we were asked to put the exhibition together, uh, it was thrown out that maybe we should do it chronologically, which really, Jack had different gardens at long as the red garden, the I pink garden, the purple garden. And I said, you know, let, let's just, you know, anyone can do chronology. Let's, right. let's do Jack. Mm -hmm. 
And so that's how we came up with the different palettes that we would use throughout the exhibition. But they're, 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 it works beautifully. Thank it works you. Beautifully. It makes it visually more uh, gorgeous, I think, because things, everything relates to itself. Yeah. Well, so we, I think we have some more images. I, I, I just wanted to bring us back in the studio to make oh, some okay. points because I thought it was a good place to do okay. it. So we're, we're, this is where we left off. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, on the, if you can see to the right where all the scarves are hanging, and I think, think you can see one hat. That's a, a, just a piece of bamboo from the garden that he had upstairs in the breezeway, and he would always put his scarves and hats on there, and it, it moves, which is really nice with the wind. And um, the, the large piece, the black and white, that's so stunning there, is what he considered the other, only other great w weaver of his time, and that's uh, Junichi Arai. Say it again. Junichi, Junichi, J-U-N-I, Arai. C-H-I. Yeah. And then Arai, A-R-A-I, a master weaver. And, and that is, that's a woven piece, it's woven and it's um, also, then it goes through a process where it shrinks. And so it ends up looking like it's three dimensionals, which is just fabulous. And then just great pots there. And um, yeah, it's fun to see his scarves. Oh, I love seeing all the fabrics hanging. Yeah, it now that you're, you're seeing little bits. Uh, the piece that, that looks like it's going on diagonals is very interesting technique because that's called a wedge weave, which is very difficult in weaving. And I think it, it illustrates how Jack has taken um, like a hand woven and has brought it into a commercial world, which is very, you know, a very hard thing to do. And that particular technique is very difficult. And I, you can't, uh, oh well, to the right you see a little bit of the, the yellow, which uh, is just a beautiful ecot, which I think Jack brought ecot to mm -hmm. the masses, <laughs> basically, because that was a, it's from Thailand and he... Uh, brought, he brought a lot of things to the masses. He, he did. I mean, he did it all. He now really he's got did. This, this, this legacy of these gardens that he's bringing to, to all yeah. these people out yeah. here, too. Is, and they'll take advantage of it. I, I love it. I know. It's really out. amazing. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you no, again, but I just no, want that's to fine. go back. That's, that's great. <laughs> oh, he's uh, rich. It, oh, there's so this is, a, this is Magnum, the two on either side, and Chan Chan in the middle. And Magnum was made for a theater curtain at, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. And it's embroidered. It has mylar. And this was back, this I was think it was theater seven, 19, a theater curtain. In 1970, and uh, heavy, it, it's so stunning. And he actually had it on his bed as a, a spread in his bedroom, which is just gorgeous. But uh, we put it together like this for the exhibition. I just love the way the Chan Chan brought the color from the pink into that mm -hmm. green, grayy, beautiful. It's really quite stunning. Um, these are. Oh, this is interesting. This is Mark Luthold, who works in porcelain. And just, he's amazing, a very close friend of Jack's. And he does our, whenever we have a benefit, we usually give an award out. And so he makes the award. So when a person gets an award, it's not just a, you know, something that anyone could do. It's, it's a one of a Mark kind. Luce it's it's ma one of a kind. It. Yes, it's one of a <laughs> what, kind. What award do you give? We do, we, we generally, are, this year for the benefit was different, but we generally do an arts award an art leadership award mm -hmm. and art leadership and what else? I, I, that's what I remember. But there are two. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, an award for an artist or maker or creator, mm -hmm. right. an award for someone who's a leader in the arts. Right. Philanthropy. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. So did you give them this year or you didn't give them? The, this year we oh. did not because we, we, there was just, we didn't yeah. really know where we, we were sure going. <laughs> well, could. of course, of course, Jack. It's, 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 everything is happening so Right, and, and because especially of COVID. after the pandemic, it's right. like, yeah. you know. We weren't sure we could have a benefit at no. first. People were talking about how long it would take for everyone to get vaccinated. Well, you know, we were, I don't know, let, let's finish the images. Oh, okay. yeah, sorry. A little bit of time. I, 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 I'll come back to what I wanted to say. Okay, and okay, here we go. On the left, the, we call this our, um, like, uh, curries. <laughs> The color. The, 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 co the colors are just And to the left is also another theater curtain that Jack did. It, it's the Wolf Trap theater curtain. And that was, um, it's mohair and uh, was made in Swaziland. Wow. And Jack 
Jack, w when he designed a textile, he really went to the country that could do it the best. So, um, so he, he worked in more than 60 countries. Wow. And, um, and then the, that arm, <laughs> that was in the one, the guest, one of the guest bedrooms in the house. And, I, and that kind of complements the across the room because that moves too. But he would have, in the bathroom, he would drape a towel over that. I just always loved that in there. And at the bottom, okay, now we're just back to the, the front. We covered that part. Oh. Thank you. Oh, Wendy, it, it, it's just beautiful what you were able to do with it to show all that stuff. It just you. was gorgeous. And the film is wonderful, too. You, you have to get over and see this exhibition before it comes down and yeah. visit Longhouse because it's a really special place. Uh, and I forgot what I was going to ask before. Remember when I started? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to add something from the show, which was sure. seeing the piece by John Luthold that we give as the awards. That Mark Luthold. Thank you. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's emblematic of the way Jack really nurtured others' talent. I her, heard from Mark, had occasion, you know, as we got together to celebrate Jack's life, of the history of his being Jack liking his work and making an effort to, you know, mentor him and then everything. And he's done that with so many people. So many people. It's very interesting because, um, you know. I get the feeling people did it back to him, though, in a way. I mean, I mean, I think, I think it's like, you know, when you get it, like people open doors to him so that he could yeah. be the full person that he was, then it makes it, it makes you want to give it back. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, he, he did that for so many people. And, yes. and he, well, the funny story is with Dale Chihuly, who was a weaver at first. And was, was I? Yes, wow. and he was weaving with glass elements. And Jack said to him, no. He said, your glass is so much better than your weaving. <laughs> and he introduced him to Harvey Middleton, who was like a great glass blower. And that's how he, he did that with so many different artists. And he would make the connections for people and really um, promoted them. It was uh, amazing really that way. Very, very nurturing that way. He was, and he we we I remember getting a call from a student, a person who was going to college, and she wanted to share her portfolio with Jack. And I thought, well, I don't know, I'll ask him. And he said, sure. And uh, you know, she came over, and he was just so wonderful, looking at every piece, Aww. making you know little comments about it all along the way. He was very generous with his time that way. I, I well, think it's he a really great was. loss that he won't be with us, but he's left us something really special. Yeah, uh, and he knew what he was doing. It wasn't casual. It wasn't an accident. And he trusted all of you people, his family, to uh, to continue it. I, I think we're very we're, lucky. We're proud to be in that we role. Are. We are. And we're, we're lucky to have you. So thank you so much for thank coming you. to do this. It's been really fun That's having you. you. You'll have to come back when you're doing something else again, too, when there's something else to talk about. We because will. Because I know there's, that, there's lots of little things going on in the background. I know that. There are. There we're are. We're out of time. Thank you. Thank you, so thank you so much. Thank you, Crap Patrick. It was great to be on the show. We appreciate it. Thank you.